hi to all of our listeners today. My name is Molly Adamson Hope from The Drum, and I'm here today with John Buss, Managing Director Northern Europe at Yext, and Perry Antonio, Senior Technology and Media Innovation Manager, um, and one of our 50 under 30 marketers of the future at Diageo. Um, welcome, thank you both for joining us. Thank you. Um, we're here today to discuss the new customer journey and leading brands into the future of search. Um, search is a fundamental element to any marketing plan and every marketer and brand leader wants to know its future. With the reservoirs of search changing, co consumer behaviour towards search is also changing. In this drumcast, we will look at how this is impacting brands. Uh, we'll be kicking things off with a look at the evolution of search led by John Buss from Yext, followed by a Q&A around the topic, and then a roundup from Perry on solutions and recommendations for businesses. Um, just to remind everyone listening, please feel free to send in any questions to drumcastquestion at thedrum.com, and we'll send you further information over email. Uh, so John, could you take us through your insight um, about the evolution of search to begin with? Sure, uh, I'd love to, just to sort of set the scene. Clearly there's been uh, a huge shift in the way that we as consumers uh, search, uh, particularly just over the last uh, few years. But actually just going back, if you think back 20 years ago, um, it used to be that a brand's website was sort of the authority of truth around every fact and bit of information uh, about a business. That's where consumers would go to find information. That's where Google and the search engines would go in order to find information about brands. And that's one of the big things that's radically changed over the last uh, few years is actually there's this uh, new kind of channel for customer engagement across all the different platforms that we all use. Google, Bing, Instagram, Foursquare, Siri, Alexa. They all carry now information about brands um, and actually this has exploded just over the last few years with mobile apps, maps, GPS systems, social media, augmented reality. It's, uh, it's been this huge exponential growth in all of these different platforms, which means that we as consumers can now find information about businesses and, and about brands across all of these different platforms. But these are platforms that the brand doesn't necessarily control or it certainly doesn't control all of the information um, that resides across all of these platforms. So one of the things that we found when we talk to uh, a lot of brands is that actually traffic to websites is declining um, overall, sort of in aggregate. And the reason is that we as consumers are finding out more information as we conduct searches across all of these other, you know, call them intelligent services, but platforms and, and, and kind of a lot of these brands that we just, and platforms and publishers that we talked about a moment ago. So we're seeing these increasing and um, searches and engagements across brand websites declining. And if you kind of extrapolate this out, which we've recently done, we believe that the engagement in searches and finding information on a brand's website will continue to, to decline. We believe that this engagement across this multitude of different platforms will continue to increase. But the two big areas that we're really seeing search evolve is actually getting information and facts from businesses and brands across voice searches, we see will explode over the next few years, and we're already seeing this today. And the other one is across messaging platforms as well. You know, the ability to be able to ask a brand a question on you know, iMessenger or on WhatsApp and actually get an answer, get a response, whether that be automated or whether that ends up being some sort of engagement with a customer services uh, individual. So, you know, for voice, for example, Siri has now passed the um, 500 million monthly user mark. I mean, this just continues to explode. So what this means for search is, you know, if you do a search now for, um, you know, what is the best Chinese restaurant, for example, you are getting answers and consistent answers across, you know, a multitude of different platforms. You're gonna get a web result you're gonna get some sort of chat result you could easily get. You're gonna get a voice result. And this is all based upon the same sort of algorithm that Google uses in order to deliver search results around distance, relevance, and prominence. So, you know, if I'm doing a search for nearest Italian gluten-free restaurant near me, I am gonna get an answer across all of these different platforms, and I've never actually touched the brand's website. This is one of the big evolutions of search right now. 
there's been an explosion in near me searches, you know, 500% increase in this variant of can I buy or to buy near me over the last few years. There's been an explosion in best searches. So, you know, up 50%, we all want the best, the best Italian gluten-free restaurant near me. And actually best is driven by reviews and the reviews and the experiences that people have had um, of, uh, of engaging with a brand, particularly in locations, whether that be retail or whether that be food services. A 200% explosion in open now searches. You know, there's this immediacy to our searches. Again, though, this evolution of search means that we are making all of these uh, searches, we're asking all these questions off a brand's website and we're getting answers. The big thing, though, that has really changed is that we are being trained to search differently. Um, we're now putting in long string search terms. Where's the best afternoon tea in London that's good for kids and has accessible bathrooms? We now get answers to questions like this. And it used to be that we would search and get a keyword. And now we get, uh, instead of searching for keywords, we ask questions and we get answers to those questions. If you think about how Google has evolved over the last sort of 20 years particularly, it used to be 20 years ago, you do a search on Google, you'd get blue links. Uh, Google would wanna get you off the page, send you on your way, take their pay-per-click. Today, Google has become a destination with content, with answers, with lots more information, carousels around products, around jobs, around events. You know, Google now wants to deliver answers to questions. And actually a good example of that is featured snippets. Today, if you do a search on Google, you know, you will get this featured snippet, which is Google sort of crawling the web to try and find an answer for you. And one of the big changes that we saw was with Wikipedia. Wikipedia actually saw its web traffic drop by 21% after Google launched featured snippets, whereby information from Wikipedia was being served up on Google. Now, Wikipedia didn't care, it isn't driven by, you know, kind of ad traffic or anything like this, but answers being delivered on Google. And, and this is very much the big evolution that we are seeing today. Right, brilliant. Thank you so much, John. Um, that's given us a really good background uh, about the topic today, and it leads us nicely into the Q&A segment. Um, we'll aim to get through as many questions on our presentation as possible within the time frame. Um, but if there's anything left unanswered that anyone listening would like to learn more about, uh, please do send us an email to drumcastquestion at thedrum.com. Um, so we'll start by going to our first question, um, which is, search is no longer a channel, but a behavior and search no longer, sorry, a human behavior, um, with search no longer confined to the keyboard or even the screen. Uh, how is this impacting brands and how are brands responding to this change? So well, why don't I take this one because it's kind of a continuation of what I was just saying a moment ago. So look, um, uh, the big thing that has changed around search, if we kind of summarize everything that I was trying to put across in that, in that kind of uh, opening preamble, was um, search has become a series of questions now and that the customer journey now starts with a question. So, you know, for example, if, um, you know, we think of a hypothetical situation of I want to go and buy some, some Bluetooth speakers. You know, the question that I might put in is, you know, best outdoor Bluetooth speakers for this occasion. I then go and I start doing reviews and searches. I go to videos and blogs to get answers to this question. And then it iterates to kind of what kind of bass and treble is best for outdoor. You know, I want this for a barbecue or something. Again, I go through this search journey and then you know, I've decided I'm gonna buy Bose speakers. So who carries Bose speakers? Again, I'll go to Google, I'll place a search, I'll probably get some sort of map result and here's a physical location and I've decided I'm gonna buy it from Dixon's car phone, it's near me. Is it open? Yes, I go and I transact. It's an example of a customer journey, which is a series of questions and answers that gets me from this initial concept of this is what I want and this is the question I'm asking through to a transaction. This is the really big change in search right now is, uh, is questions and the ability for brands to be able to deliver you know, answers from them um, that, 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 that kind of delivers, um, ultimately they're gonna to want to be able to deliver some sort of engagement or, or, or a transaction of some description. That's great. Um, and how 
on the next question. Um, how are new intelligent technologies um, allowing search marketers to make faster and smarter decisions? Um, can you share some of your experiences with us, Perry? Yeah, so um, following on from what John's been talking about, John has mentioned a lot about um, the front end is what I would say. So how do you actually get a response, surface a response to the queries that are happening? Um, what's happening in the background and as marketers, we've never been in a better position um, to, to do is, you know, is take advantage of all the information that, of questions that we're not answering or um, the behaviors of, of, of users um, and exactly what kind of terminology they're using uh, when they are searching. Uh, so um, the fact that we've gone from text to speech, i.e. You know, typing into Google through to you know, speaking to an assistant device, does the term or does the query, how do I make an old fashioned change when it's t text versus when it's speech? And if so, how do we make sure that the information that we want to surface is going to be accessible and is structured in the relevant way uh, so that it can be fed to the user. Um, but at the same time, I think it, I will identify a lot of gaps. Uh, there will be questions that we're not answering, and that's what's really exciting. What are the questions that we're not answering at the moment that we feel we play, we, our brands or the mar our marketers should play a role in answering on behalf of uh, the business? And once we get an idea of what those questions are and, uh, and how we can respond to them, what does that generate for us um, as far as further business, further interest, further NSV is concerned, and so on and so forth. And that will vary based on the types of queries. So I'd probably say that um, some form of data and analytics and providing ourselves with that insight is, is really exciting for our marketers and part of the work that we're doing. And how are marketers and brands preparing now for a future in which voice and virtual assistants play a much larger role in content discovery and driving conversions? Um, how is Yex particularly helping with the brands? So, I mean, we're definitely seeing that, that marketers recognize that they need to structure content in a different way to answer these questions. So if you think again, going back to those examples of long string searches, you know, say it's financial services, I want to find a, a wealth advisor near me, specializes in pensions, and you know what? It's for my wife and she's French, so this person needs to speak French. So I've just like searched for a ton of different things there because my search is very specific. In order to show up for that search and to answer that question, you've got to structure your data in a way that you, you know, can answer that question. And if you think about how these intelligent services work, if you think about Alexa, you know, most of us now have a Google Home Alexa or have used Siri on our phone. Need to be careful not to say that too loud or suddenly she's going to wake up. <laughs> but, um, you, you know, they, they all work in the same way. Even Google kind of, even Google Maps works in this way, is that you've got these three layers of how these intelligent services work. So you've got the UI, the way that we engage with it, whether it's voice or visual or keying, whatever. You've got the AI, which is the intelligence that determines how is it going to answer this question? And actually, a brand, Yext, none of us can control the UI or the AI of these intelligent services. But what sits underneath that is what Google calls a knowledge graph. All the information structured in the right way that all of these intelligent services from Alexa to Instagram to Facebook to Google interrogate to serve up an answer. And businesses now need to structure the information about their brand, their services, their products, their events, their jobs, their people in the right way so that actually they can show up for these searches. And you know, this is complicated stuff. It's about creating linkages. It's about having this hosted in the right platform. And that's that's how Yext is helpful, is that we help them structure this in a platform across information to do with physical locations, opening time, products sold, um, events that are being held there, people that might work there, wealth advisors as we talked about, jobs, all sorts of things. So that's the big thing that with this change in search that brands need to be thinking about. Yeah, incredibly valuable. Um, and the future of search uh, is arguably the future of marketing, perhaps all commerce. Um, what does search strategy then look like for businesses such as Diageo, Perry? So there's, I would say there's a baseline piece that we need to kind of uh, lay out to start with, which is, people are searching for some form of information, we need to make sure that we're answering those questions. That's the baseline for the business. That's the baseline for our brands and working with, the right, with our agencies and our experts and being proactive in our approach, we just make sure uh, that we're present. And working with the right customers, if there's a conversion conversation, to ensure that we can provide conversion as well. 
So that's really rich for us uh, and it's a great channel. However, there's this piece um, around the future of search, which is more about the interfaces that we can interact with in order to interact with the information at hand. And that is where I think the element of complexity is occurring. And that's why, to John's point, the importance of structured information is critical. So um, as far as a, biz a strategy, a search strategy for Diageo is concerned, the baseline, having that in place, and ensuring that our brands are discoverable um, and our experiences are discoverable, uh, discoverable and our customers, i.e. the bar trade, the restaurant trade, nightclubs, grocers are discoverable. And then also preparing for what's up ahead. These new interfaces, how do they work? How do we um, take advantage of these? Do we need to develop applications specifically for these? I, um, I'm sure we'll touch on it in a bit more depth after, but we have the bar, which is a skill on, a, on Alexa that we've developed, which is about making cocktails um, and how to make cocktails. There are certain pain points that that experience unlocks for users, which we'll touch on later, uh, but it's about identifying those and identifying the interfaces that are relevant and then structuring the information to be able to seed that out. And I think as part of my role at Diageo, which is quite an exciting role, I get to be on the front line and to understand what these new interfaces could look like and how we can play a role, but also to take our brands on that journey of learning about these new interfaces and ensuring that they're future-proof to some extent so there's no surprises, because if you have no preparation or no understanding or limited understanding of what's coming up next, you will very quickly, especially in today's age, uh, fall behind. Brilliant. And um, also, uh, what will brands have to do to stay competitive as the organic search landscape continues to change? So I'm going to answer this question, I suppose, a bit wider than just search. Um, I think the work we've been doing at Diageo over the past kind of three and a half, four years now around test and learn and an agenda um, which, is, which is driven to um, really drive a cultural change, if you like, in the way we do things. It's quite easy as a marketer to put money behind business as usual, stuff that works, put it out there, it's gonna give me a return. And that's great, and that's obviously critical to, um, to performance. However, um, one area that kind of we're tasked with in my team at Diageo is to ensure that our brands um, are enabled um, and have that perspective of what's going forward. So um, my recommendation to businesses would be, if you have, um, a, a cons you know, you have an idea of what, uh, what works for you, um, make sure that you're spending some form of time, I know Google talk about 20%, whether it's time or investment, and also surrounding yourself with the right proactive partners, and I think proactive's key, uh, to begin testing and learning. And we're not testing at large scale, uh, we're testing at small scale, testing, concepts that uh, unlock business challenges, testing ideas that are relevant to human behaviors and not things that quite easily as marketers we might think that people need. Um, and baking, in that, baking that into our day-to-day. -day. And if you're baking that into your day-to-day, -day, you will find yourself um, failing. You'll be testing stuff that doesn't work. And actually, what I find is that gives me more direction as to what I should be doing. Um, so it's just as much a learning as when we get to a point of of winning and, and learning something that's um, actually applicable to take to scale, whether that's across brands or across the business. Brilliant. And um, obviously also, how is AI changing the search marketing landscape? Yeah, yeah, that's a, I mean, so there's a, there's a whole load of things happening. Natural language processing being, I think, um, by far the biggest transformation that's occurred. The ability for computers to understand the context of, and the substance within conversations to some extent. Um, but that, now what does that technology drive? Uh, it drives the ability for Google to surface answers on uh, the results page, meaning that clicking through onto a blue link is pretty less likely because the answer's there. Um, and we know about the answer box being the way that Google structures responses to voice assistants. How do you make sure that you structure your, your data in a way so that through voice assistants you're giving responses as well? Um, and because of the enrichment of natural language processing, we're seeing Google duplex. Um, there's this you know, uh, great video that's I'm sure everyone's seen of um, Google presenting uh, a, their Google Assistant doing a background call to book a hairdresser's. Uh, with a human, so computers are human, uh, seeing that interaction, very, very seamless. 
Um, so that's another area which I think is going to be super interesting. And the last, which is AI driven as well, is um, I know I refer to Google a lot, but obviously they own this space um, quite predominantly, is um, Google Lens and the ability for image recognition. The fact that I can scan a bottle of Johnny Walker Black Label and then within seconds find a place either to buy it or uh, find information about serves I can create with that product. Um, that, you know, we never had that ability before. And again, these are very human things. The ability to see, the ability to speak and, and so on. Uh, we're, all we're doing is replicating uh, um, all the, uh, the behaviors that we have but um, to, to in, in a format which allows us to access the information that we're actually looking for as well. looking at uh, how are marketers and brands preparing for a future um, in which voice and virtual assistants uh, play a much larger role in content discovery and driving conversions? Um, so how are they doing this? I think, you know, again, it comes back to a lot of the things that we've been talking about, which is structuring to answer these questions. Uh, I, I mean, voice is, uh, again, just come back to the home speaker. Did you know the home speaker is the fastest growing technology ever? So there's a trend we kind of track uh, how long it takes for different technologies to get to 50 million uh, active users. So it took something like uh, 50 years for the telephone, home telephone, to get to 50 million users. It took four years for the iPod. It took three years for the iPhone to get to 50 million users. It took two and a half years, 50 million users of the home speaker, and it is still exploding. So it's the wow. fastest growing technology ever, and it is changing this whole kind of behavior and consumer behavior. The big thing about speakers and voice is that it delivers answers. So actually today, only 50% of questions that get put and posed on Google deliver an answer. Yet about 90% of all questions that get posed on voice applications get an answer because that's kind of what they're designed for. So it's making sure that you own the truth around that answer because there's so much erroneous information out there today on the web. So if you ask questions like how many calories there are in a Big Mac or you ask questions around um, how many calories there are in a pint of Guinness. This is something that Perry and I Googled recently and at one point uh, Google was serving up the wrong answer from a featured snippet from some random blogger. Actually, they seem to have done something about it and now instead of it showing as 120 calories, it shows as 220 calories in a pint of Guinness. But that was the answer that was coming back when you pose some of these questions. Um, people will be asking questions to Unilever around, is there palm oil in Dove deodorant, for example? It's one of millions of questions that you could be thinking about. And actually the answers that you're being served back, is this an answer that's verified by the brand? Do they own that answer? If not, then all of these mistruths are being put out to questions that people are posing. So the big things that brands want to do is they want to own the truth. They want to own that answer. And the only way they can own that answer is by structuring the information, by putting frequently asked questions on web pages that are crawlable by Google, or put them in a platform and make sure that they can be surfaced on the brand's website. So the truth gets delivered, the right answer gets delivered to that consumer at that point of asking that question. That's the big thing that's changing right now is structuring that data to be able to deliver the truth. I can add a perspective on a user experience front. So going back to the bar application that we've developed, um, one thing that voice enables us to do is um, be hands-free. So one of the pain points around cocktail making, especially in the home environment, it's not a very accessible um, thing to do. You need to kind of know your spirits, your mixers, or have them at home. If you want garnishes, you'll need garnishes. Ice tends to always be a challenge. And then you also need a shaker and a mixer and a muddler and you know stuff I've never heard of. Yeah, it's, um, <laughs> it's one of those, uh, it's a, I, I, it's a, a that, via voice, <laughs> I don't think <laughs> Yes, exactly. So um, as far as we were concerned, looking at a you know Alexa Echo device, which has a screen, in, you know, it has a, a visual aid, um, we felt that there were certain pain points that that could actually tackle for us. So gone are the days of a tablet swipe or a recipe book, book that you need to try and change the pages off whilst your hands are wet. You can now say to Alexa, Alexa, open the bar. How do I make a Tom Collins? Alexa will serve you up with the recommend with a with the um, the ingredients list rather, which you could purchase, um, and then it takes you on a step by step how to all hands free. So as much as important as it is to also consider the you know the structuring of the information and how that surfaced, 
to also understand on a consumer challenge level within our industry, what are the, some of the challenges we, we can unlock um, using these technologies. Uh, it also automatically be, um, begins to enable certain occasions, which maybe in the past we wouldn't have considered we'd be able to enable through technology. Let's say you have some friends over. And to shake things up, just say, Alexa, open the bar. Welcome to the bar. It's like a personal bartender, except you don't need to tip. Let's start with a classic. Old fashioned coming right up. Start with the sugar. Add ice. Pour in the whiskey. Stir patiently. Garnish with the orange zest. Cheers. And for friends that don't know what they want, it can even find something for them. Would you like something sweet or sour? Sweet. Looks like you're in the mood for a cosmopolitan. Just mix, shake, twist, strain, peel, flame, and serve. Boom! Look at you, Mr. Bartender. Just say, Alexa, open the bar to start making cocktails. Alexa, I feel like a vodka martini. Do you like that shaken or stirred? Um, brilliant. So, um, rounding things up and going back to my original statement that search is a fundamental element to any marketing plan um, and every marketer and brand leader wants to know its future. Um, could you both comment on what uh, does the future hold for search? Um, I mean, I'm happy to just kick this off with, I think it's about searching across different platforms moving forwards. We've been talking a lot here about, you know, keying search, voice search, chat, which can enable search. It's gonna be visual search. You know, the ability further down the line just to be able to pick up your camera on whatever phone you've got and look around you and to be able to look at a shop or a business and pull up all the information through augmented reality. That's a search, actually. That's a search without even having a key. It. That's a search just by pointing something at a device. That is not far away. In fact, you know, we walked today from a station yep. and uh, we didn't realize, we keep giving Google a lot of plugs here, don't we? But <laughs> Google has just put into beta this thing called Live View that you put into your map where you're going, you put directions and instead of having to be that, you know, that person walking around going the wrong way until the map works out which direction you're going, you flip it up now and it gives you an augmented re uh, reality view or the map using your phone straight ahead and the camera of where you're going and it gives you directions as you're moving forwards. That, search augmented reality of facts in the world around you being presented in that view can only be uh that that's going to be coming very very soon that's that's also the future of search absolutely and again i the one point i referred to earlier we have the ability to unearth the information now which can give us steer as to what we should be doing more than ever so never losing sight of that the fact that we can track uh you what time of term what type of terminology is being uh, used in queries and um, un un identifying gaps within our activity that we can begin to, um, to plug, if you like, which means that our users at the end of the day and our consumers will just have a much better experience. And at the end of the day, that's what we all want. Brilliant. Um, well, unfortunately, that is all, time, all the time that we have today for the Q&A segment. Um, so we will move on to the last part of today's drum cast. Uh, with a roundup from Perry, um, including some solutions and recommendations um, for businesses off the back of our discussion um, and any other insight that you'd like to give us. Um, and yeah, so handing over to you, Perry. So I think I, I can totally understand and you know, I work with marketers every day and some of the best in the world. And uh, I can understand how a lot of this can be very daunting because of the biggest thing is the speed of change, I think. It's rapid and every week, Live View, for example, I felt like it was yesterday when it was going, you know, it was kind of being talked about as a thing and all of a sudden it's, it's out and live. Um, excuse me, yeah. Um, <laughs> so keeping uh, sight of these, these prog this progress that's occurring is really tough. Um, whether you're a small business or a huge enterprise, you need to somehow stay on top. Um, so firstly, being un unafraid to get, roll up your sleeves and get your hands dirty and figure some things out for yourselves, which has been a great learning for me. Um, going out there, speaking to people, um, the right partners, um, even the wrong partners, so you know who to work with, who's got the information that you need that's gonna help streamline your approach. Um, use that information wisely, apply it to your work at a small scale so you can understand how it impacts 
um, and then learn, 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 and don't be afraid to fail. I know that sounds really cliche, but actually, it's really working for us at Diageo. Um, it's giving us all the steer that we need to be able to feed back to brand teams uh, what works and what doesn't. But it's also allowing us to really spearhead and innovate. And it's things, you know, applications like the bar, and we, you know, a, a chat bot that we've developed, which allows people to find the perfect whiskey, either for themselves or for a gift. You know, whiskey being a really difficult category. All of these things are huge unlockers for us. Um, and without having the ability to roll up our sleeves and get our hands dirty, and like again, it's a small scale, low risk, we wouldn't be in the position we are now to actually be talking about this with such confidence. Brilliant, thank you so much. much. Um, right, right, so, so that, that brings, brings us to the end of our session today. Um, thank you both John and Perry um, for sharing your insights with us. It's been a really illuminating conversation um, and great to meet you both. Um, if anyone's been listening and would like to know more about the subject, then please do send your questions to drumcastquestion at thedrum.com and we'll get back to you with more information um, from Yext and Diageo. Uh, so you've been listening to The Drum in association with Yext. Um, thank you so much, Perry, as well. Thank you. Uh, brilliant. Thank you to all of our listeners. Thanks very much. Thank you.